Advanced Google Forms and Docs Using Add-ons, Session 2, Add-ons for Docs. The first Google add-on for Docs we're going to talk about is Google Translate. Now remember, add-ons for Docs are available in Docs and add-ons for Forms are available in Forms. And there are some add-ons that are available in both Docs and Forms. Google Translate is a Docs add-on. As of now, it is not available for forms, but that could change. There are several language options, but not a comprehensive list. You can translate from English, French, German, Spanish, and Japanese. So if there's another language you're looking for, this add-on won't be the best for you. You are able to select a text within a document or pick text and reinsert it into the document. This Google Translate tutorial will show you how it works. Once you've added Translate to your add-on menu, simply go to Translate and click on Start. You need to have the text that you want to translate in your Google Doc. You can simply select Auto Detect for the selected text language that it originates in. And then these are your choices to translate into. And I know it is a limited version, but they will always be adding and improving. If you want to translate a whole paragraph, simply highlight the whole paragraph pick the language you want to translate it into, and click Translate. The translation appears in this window right here. So if for some reason you don't want to use it, you don't have to. If you want to use it, simply click Insert, and it will replace your highlighted text with the translated language. If you want to use languages by default, like just say you're always going to do English to Spanish, simply click on use these languages by default. If you want to just translate part of a sentence or one word or two, simply highlight the words that you want, pick the language that you wanted to translate into, and hit translate. You want to insert it? Insert. Simple as that. And that's how you use Google Translate. The next add-on for Google Docs is EasyBib. And some of you might be familiar with the EasyBib website. And yes, it is developed by the same company. EasyBib allows you to easily create a bibliography. It allows you to automatically cite books, journal articles, and websites and it gives various citation types, MLA, APA, Chicago. So depending on what your requirement is, you can change the type of citation. Once the bibliography is created, it is inserted into the bottom of the Google Doc that you're working in. And the great thing is the citations are alphabetized for you. Let's take a look at the video tutorial for EasyBib. The website EasyBib is now available as an add-on in Google, which is awesome. If you're not familiar with add-ons, certain apps or websites can be accessed right through your Google Doc. At the top of the Google page, there is the word add-ons. If you click on it, you can scroll down and go to Get Add-ons. If you're looking for EasyBib, if it doesn't come up, I, mine comes up because I have it installed, you can type in EasyBib under the search, and it'll bring up EasyBib. You will have a free button and a plus button here that all you have to do is click on it and it will add it. I've already added it to my account, that's why I have Manage. So let me show you with another add-on that I haven't added what you will see. So for example, thesaurus. If I click on the thesaurus, 
it brings them up a little window. Here's the free button. You simply click on the free button. It will ask for some permissions. You can click accept. This is okay for students to do as well because it is through their Google account, so it's not sharing any personal information. And now if you go to add-ons, it will be in the list. All you have to do to use it is simply click on <coughs> EasyBib Bibliography Creator. And it comes up in the right-hand column. And what you can do is it will cite your source. If it's a book, you can click book. Journal article, click journal article. Website, click website. So just say I want to do the Adams 12 website. So for website, you need the website URL. For the journal article, it'll say title, keywords, or DOI. And book is title, ISBN number, or keywords as well. So let's go to website, and if I put in www.adams12.org and I click search, it finds it. I simply hit select, and here would be a proper bibliography for Adams 12. Now we've got MLA, APA, Chicago, and all I have to do to add it to the doc is click Add Bibliography to Doc. And what it does is it adds the bibliography to the bottom of your document. There you go. Simple. The next add-on is called LucidChart. If you've taken my Google Ninja course, you're already familiar with LucidChart and know how amazing a tool it is. LucidChart is an add-on that allows you to use the LucidChart website to create and edit Lucid Charts from your Google Docs or insert Lucid Charts you've already created. And what is a Lucid Chart? Well, a Lucid Chart is a collaboration tool that makes drawing diagrams really easy and fast. So you could have collaborated on a flow chart, some form of graphic organizer, and have already saved it and insert it into your Google Doc. Or be working on a Google Doc and create a new one. The great thing is, is if you insert a diagram from LucidChart, it will update the inserted diagram with the latest changes. So just say you're in your LucidChart account and updating some diagram that you've already inserted into a Google Doc. If you make your updates on the website LucidChart, it will update that document, that chart, in the document where you've already inserted it. It's the whole sharing and Web 2.0 read write web. It's one of the joys of Google. Just like when you make a Google Doc and you share it with someone, if you make an update, that person sees the updates on their doc even though they haven't even been in that doc. And the next time they go, they have the updated version. So the same thing works with Lucid Charts. Once you've inserted into them a doc, they will update as you change them. Another great thing about Lucid Charts is there's hundreds of templates and examples, which are always nice for us. There's flow charts, there's diagrams, there are mind maps, there's organization charts. So you've got many options to even get you going. It's really powerful and it's easy to use. There are hundreds of shapes, you can drop and drag your old images, you can export things as PDF docs, and you're able to collaborate with other people on the charts as well. And we all know how important collaboration is these days in the classroom. So let's take a look at a tutorial on Lucid Charts. In Google Docs, I already renamed my document. So from here, I want to add in um, a chart or a diagram actually into my document. <clears throat> I click the add-ons button or the add-ons tab and I already have LucidChart diagrams installed as an add-on but if you don't here's how you get it. get add-ons it opens up a browser that looks very similar to the Chrome store and you can either search the add-ons that they already have listed here or you can scroll through this is LucidChart diagrams I already have it installed um, but you will see to uh, add LucidChart uh, on your screen Hit the X, add-ons again, 
Lucidchart diagrams, I can either insert a new one or I can update one that's already inserted um, into my document. Let's insert a new one. It opens up this table off to the right hand side. And any diagrams that I've already created um, will be here. I can search for diagrams. I can select any of these and insert them directly into the document. Or I can create a new one. These are a list of pre-made templates that Lucidchart has available for you. <coughs> Today I want to make a Venn diagram. Grade 3 has been studying uh, mixtures and solutions and comparing and contrasting acids and bases. So I'm going to select Venn diagram. And by default, it wants to open up a three-circle Venn diagram. I'm going to give it a new title, and I'm going to call this one New Acids and Bases. Click OK. And notice I'm already signed in as myself. And I need to eliminate one of these circles. So I select the circle, hit the delete button, select this title, delete that, delete the text here, and delete the text here. I'm going to move the text box to the top of the circle, text box to the top of the bold section of the Venn diagram. Now I'll rename them. Put this side acids, put this side bases, <clears throat> and I'll call this box both. All right, now I'm ready to actually start typing. So in the green circle, I want to add in some information about acids. So I'm going to grab the T, I'm going to drop it in, and right away I want to resize this text box to make it fit inside the circle. Push this side in a little bit too. And I want to drop in a text box inside the bases circle as well. So I'll resize, drag this side, and let's drag it down. Perfect. And I also want to add in another text box into this section. Resize this one, <clears throat> put it over, and drag it down. Now by default, it wants to center the text in the middle of the text box. So I highlight the word text, and up at the very top, there are three buttons. One is to center, one is to uh, put at the footer, put at the bottom of the box, and the other one is to put at the top, to align it at the top. So I'll select top align. I also want to move the word text over. I'm going to do the same thing for this box as well. Select the word, align it to the top, align it to the left, and select the word, align it to the top, <coughs> and align it to the left. And now I'm ready to actually start typing. So, first bit of information about acids. Uh, they have a low pH number between 0 and 6. And I want to use bullet points. So I'll highlight the text again. And this tab here will allow me to drop in a bullet. And on this side, I do the same thing. I have a high pH number 8 to 14. Highlight the text, put in my bullets. And now I can go on from here. I can keep typing inside the box, um, and my next bit of information I hit will already be bolded for me. Alright, when I'm all done, I hit the save button. And notice it's already called new acids and bases. Save it. Go back to my Google Doc. And in the search bar, off to the side, I have my document called new acids and bases. Double click on it. It opens it up in the window. And now I can insert. When it inserts uh, the Venn diagram into the document, it's going to look uh, just like you insert an image file into the document. So you can add text in, you can uh, wrap the text if you want, you can resize um, the image if you want. It's a pretty cool feature. So that's how to insert a diagram using Lucidchart diagrams uh, in the add-ons feature in Google Docs. I uh, hope you enjoyed and go create. Tag Cloud Generator 
is a super fun add-on. And if you're familiar with tag cloud generators online such as Wordle or Taggle at Tagzito, you'll be familiar with it. If you're not familiar with what a tag cloud is, a tag cloud is taking the words from a selected text and creating a visual representation of those words. Words that are mentioned more frequently are emphasized and stop words like the and if are ignored. Now this tag cloud generator will generate tag clouds in a Google Doc with words that are 50 words or more. It's an add-on that will allow you to quickly assess what a emerging theme is in a document. It can help you decide how to best categorize a document or for working with students, have kids can make a tag cloud out of someone else's document to find out the theme of the document without reading the whole document. And I, like I mentioned before, stop words are removed. Let's take a look. Is You can create a similar thing using an add-on called Tag Cloud Generator. A couple things about Tag Cloud Generator is it will create a tag cloud from a Google Doc that has 50 words or more simply by clicking on Create Tag Cloud while you're in the Google Doc. What it does is it brings up a tag cloud in the right hand panel of your screen. Now this is a really good tool if you want to look for themes, trends in a certain document. Unfortunately, unlike other tag cloud generators such as Wordle or Tagzito or Taggle, you cannot save or print a copy of this. So this tool would more likely be used as a good kind of feedback tool or conversation tool or collaboration tool within Google Docs. If you wanted kids to analyze each other's writings or if you had some document that you were able to copy and paste into a Google Doc so kids could bring up and see what the important themes are. Just like in a tag cloud generator, the words that are repeated more appear larger. If you add more things to a document, for example, if I pasted some more information in or I added more information in, you could click Refresh Cloud and it would give you a new tag cloud if I were to add information. And that's how you use Tag Cloud Generator. The last Google add-on for Docs that we're going to watch in this part of Session 2 is called the Thesaurus. And it simply acts just as a regular Thesaurus would that you could use in Google Docs tools or an online Thesaurus that you find online. There is multi-language support. You are able to replace the words that you highlight with synonyms, you're able to explore antonyms as well, and it all lets you do this through Google Docs. So let's take a look at the tutorial. I'm going to show you a simple add-on called Thesaurus. Pretty much the name explains what it does. Once again, go to add-ons, click on get add-ons. If it doesn't come up on your bar here, you can see it there. Type it up here. And once again, you'll just click Add. So once you've got a piece of writing, you can open it up. It's pretty simple. There's a couple of ways you can use it. First way being, you just highlight a word, click on Search, and it'll come up with your adjectives, your synonyms, antonyms, similes, etc. Uh, once again, just highlight a different word, click on search, or you can just think to yourself 
and type a word in. Um, easy way so students don't have to use a thesaurus or go out and find a different site. They can just have the one tab open. So that is called a thesaurus and you can find that in Google add-ons. We have now have come to the end of part one of session two, Google add-ons for Docs. What you need to do next is to continue to part two of the video for session two. It appears in the same folder where you found this video. Review the tutorials on the links docs for session two once you've watched both part one and part two and then move to the assignment. You cannot complete the assignment for session two until you have viewed part one and part two and review the tutorials.